Hello friends, and welcome to another video from Meloncast, in which I will tell you some new amazing stories. But before we begin, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button on this video. Also, don't forget to write your thoughts about these stories in the comments. On to our first story, Crazy Neighbor Caught by Police. So my former neighbor was someone who is, safe to say, a nightmare neighbor. When I moved into the building I'm in now, it was right at the beginning of COVID lockdowns in the UK. He also moved in a few weeks before. For the first few weeks, I was working regularly still as I got a second job working in a hospital as a cleaner to make extra money while my other job was putting me on furlough. So I am also a bit of an insomniac, so staying up late with the TV on is not something uncommon to me. My first instance of him and I meeting, he knocks on my door to say turn down the TV. I naturally think that this is a reasonable thing to ask, so I do it. A couple of weeks later, I get a noise complaint from the council saying my washing machine and TV was too loud. Now, I'm on the top floor of my building. Before, I was on a ground floor, so it was a bit of an adjustment on how I moved around. A few weeks after that, while I was sleeping, he bangs on my door angrily telling me to turn off my washing machine. It was 2 a.m. and everything in my house was off. This should have been the first sign of him being off his nut. I simply showed him my washing machine was off and told him that he woke me up and I'd be following this incident up with estate agents. He immediately started being aggressive, saying that it would be very unwise to do that. I simply said, lay a finger on me and I'll have you thrown in jail. He simply skulks off and goes back to his flat. I do as I say in the morning and follow through with reporting it to the estate agents and they apologize and promise to do something about it. A few weeks later, when I've been working days of double shifts, 12 hours plus, in a row in my normal job, I set my washing machine to start at 8 a.m. so I can have the washing ready for 11. This didn't bode well for my neighbor who, after 20 minutes of the washing machine being on, starts hitting my door with a hammer. I open the door to figure out what the heck is going on. I see him charging back up the steps. Immediately, I slam the door back to keep him out. He demanded that I turn off the machine while trying to push his way into my flat. I hold my ground and tell him to p I naturally am shaken and get my uniform out the washing machine, call the police, and go to the police station to make a report. For a few months, I'm left alone by him because he is told in no uncertain terms that he is going to be evicted if there is one more incident from him. Naturally, there are many as he regularly came stumbling in drunk or high, banging on doors and sexually harassing one of the female neighbors when her boyfriend is out. As time passed, he's not bothered me for a while, so I figured that he learned his lesson. Boy, was I wrong. He bangs on my door just at the start of November, demanding that I keep the noise down despite everything I had was on 4% max on volume. I was trying to not provoke him because I just couldn't be asked with him. So he bangs on my flat door and I naturally tell him to off again. He doesn't like this. How dare someone stand up to him, I guess. He actually pushed his way into my flat. After minutes of yelling at me and me yelling back loud enough to make sure all the neighbors heard us, he capped it all off by threatening to kill me if I ever bothered him again, to which I told him to take his best shot. I quickly summoned the police, explained everything, and they informed me that he was a schizophrenic and three-time former patient from the nut house. Immediately, the police put in the paperwork for him to be sectioned again, at my insistence. Well, they did this and for weeks, nothing happens. Now, I know that he had been out for about a week and the day before actually asked the estate agents if they knew if he'd moved out or something. But at the end of the previous day, someone had picked up his mail, so figured he'd come back from wherever he was. The estate agents actually called his mother for a welfare check. Turned out that he was actually hiding at his mom's after committing a bunch of assaults while high as a kite on meth. Because apparently that's a bad combo with schizophrenia. Who knew? When the estate agents called up, he thought his mom was ratting him out to the cops and ran out thinking it would help him get out of trouble. But the cops were actually waiting for him to come home and had foot patrols increased on the road to wait for him. A friend of mine in the local police said that they were given instructions to every shift for a week report any sighting of him so that they can locate him on CCTV and track him to wherever he was hiding. Anyways, back to the police at his door. They're there knowing that he's there thanks to me. They're trying to persuade him to open the door with no luck. Me, feeling and confident, decided to put on the washing machine just to properly off. It didn't take long for this genius to come out and try to attack me as before. As soon as he saw the cops, he immediately pushed them back and slammed the door. 
I go back downstairs to find one copper with a nose and the other one making sure that he's okay. Not gonna lie, I was concerned that these guys weren't up for the job at hand. I asked if they were okay and they replied that they were going to call some more people to help with the arrest. I then decided to be extra good to them and offered them a cuppa. They declined but thanked me for the offer while calling more people to the building. After about two hours of trying to negotiate with this lunatic, they decided to pry the door open with a crowbar. Within seconds, they went through the flat, got control of the pit bull that was stuck on them before actually tasing my neighbor. Not once, not twice, but three times just to get him into cuffs because apparently he kept getting back up. I go into the stairwell on my way to work just in time to see my neighbor being dragged out kicking and screaming by four police officers and another one behind with the dog under control just walking it on a leash from the flat. It's been a month since his arrest and he's apparently been given 10 years in prison for everything he did now after pleading out and his flat is going to be on the market soon. Supposedly his mother isn't going to get her money back on the deposit and will be paying $20,000 in damages and rent owed. That's not a neighbor, that's a walking nightmare, really. I had a similar situation once. I was at my mom's friend's house and a crazy neighbor from downstairs started breaking into the apartment. He took a hammer and started hitting the door with it, and for no reason at all. It was unreal scary, and on the door after that were a lot of marks from hitting it with a hammer. Of course we called the police, but they weren't competent enough and came very late. But they did take him to the police department even though it was very late. I was under enormous stress that day, and I really feel bad for the OP who had to put up with this neighbor literally breaking into his house. Even worse, he was receiving threats from that same neighbor. I would be afraid to live and sleep in my own house knowing that some jerk could start breaking into my house at any time and even try to make his threats come true. Call the police until they arrive and take action against such persons. The second story goes like this. The selfish neighbor got what he deserved. Just so this story makes more sense, I live in a smallish gated community and me and my neighbor's house are in the corner of the community and our garages face each other, so we can't pull out at the same time etc because it's a tight space. Our direct neighbors consist of a couple and their kids. The wife is nice enough, the kids are okay, but the husband, recently found out he's now ex-husband, is a total a-hole. We'll call him Sam for the purpose of the story. We, and the community HOA, has had multiple previous issues with Sam. First was the night that he was in the house screaming obscenities at the top of his lungs to his wife in the garage. The cops were called, but nothing happened. The second was him illegally dumping a mattress outside our gate, which he was recorded doing so on various ring doorbell cameras and reprimanded. And then there was the incident with my mom. My mom, who had cancer at the time, was headed to an appointment and she opened the garage to leave and Sam's big A truck was parked outside of his open garage, therefore blocking my mom from leaving. He was nowhere to be found. My mom sat patiently waiting for 15 minutes before honking her horn. Not even 30 seconds later, he emerges from his house and stands behind my mom's car angrily screaming that my mom is a B and he knows that we reported him for the mattress, which we didn't and started yelling F you, etc. at the top of his lungs, waving his arms in the air like an idiot. Finally, he gets in his truck and whips it around so my mom can leave, now late for her appointment. That's when we knew Sam was a complete A. After that incident, we noticed more often that he would just park his truck in front of his garage, again therefore blocking ours, and would disappear for 30 to 40 minutes. The final straw happened last week. I'm at work and get a ring doorbell notification that my mom is entering through the front door, which was weird because that means she didn't park in the garage, she parked in one of the parking spots in the neighborhood. Yes, there is other public spots in the neighborhood that Sam could have been parking in. And in the background of the camera, I can see Sam's dumb A truck once again blocking our garage. 30 minutes go by and it's still there and I am fed up. I screenshot the video feed and send it to a member of the HOA and send a message outlining how this has been happening for months, blah, blah, blah. He screamed at my mom and what did they do? Called a tow truck. F you, Sam. Actually, Sam had no right to block the garage exit and I would advise the OP to call the HOA whenever Sam parks like that. Not even mentioning the way he behaves to his neighbors, he has no moral right to do that. 
Although, what's to say about his behavior to strangers if he was shouting obscenities at his woman? The OP did the right thing, as Sam is doing the wrong thing by blocking someone else's garage, and he also shouldn't have insulted the OP's mom. And I'm very glad that the HOA did the right thing in this story and took the proper action. The man is acting selfishly and purposely ignoring neighbors' requests for 30 to 40 minutes, thereby ruining their plans. I hope Sam learns his lesson and no longer thinks only about himself. And if not, let the tow truck come again and again. The third story is the visit of a man that Karen least expected to see. My dad is an African American and went on a walk around the community park around 3 in the afternoon. He was wearing jeans, a polo, etc. Someone who had recently moved in, maybe only two weeks, sent an email to the president of the HOA because they were unable to attend the meeting. They said they had a photo of a suspicious person who had been obviously casing people's houses to rob them and included photos of my dad. The president of the HOA emailed back that they were very concerned after seeing the photos and would stop by her house to discuss the issue in person. Then they scheduled a time to talk and come up with safety strategies. My dad is the president of the HOA. He said the look on her face when she opened the door was priceless. He then proceeded to discuss the issue with her like she hadn't just emailed him a picture of himself, asking her, now why did you feel concerned for your safety? And what about him made you think this man was a threat? She didn't send any more complaints. At the beginning of this story, I thought it would go so far that the HOA would not tolerate the fact that she was judging people by their nationality and appearance. But the fact that the person who was slandered and in such a way was the president of the HOA made the story even more glorious. I really liked his reaction. It's so funny when you imagine the woman's face at the moment when she saw the same man she had slandered and when he started asking questions about what exactly made her think that the man in the photo, him, could be a danger. His calm professionalism is astounding. You should never judge a person by their appearance, especially blame him for something he did not do or intend to do. Stereotypical thinking is a bad thing. Friends, thank you for watching this video. Just a reminder, subscribe, like, and comment. See you soon.